The CDC says one out of 36 children in the U.S. has been diagnosed with autism. April is Autism Acceptance Month, and tomorrow, April 2nd, is World Autism Awareness Day. Here to talk more about this is clinician Professor Brian uh, Melillo. He's a researcher and best-selling author. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We really appreciate it. Um, Thank you for having me. Yeah, I feel like, you know, there have been some recent headlines. Uh, Tallulah Willis, the daughter of Bruce and Demi, uh, recently came out as an adult and said, you know, I have autism and this is a diagnosis that changed my life. Uh, so this is, I think this is something we think about in just children, but it can be diagnosed at many times in life. What are some of the signs of autism? Well, you know, the classic signs are what we call repetitive behaviors or things called stims like hand flapping. We often see delays in language development and motor development. Um, we also see really issues with communication, uh, nonverbal communication like eye t contact, but at about 40 or 50 percent, we see a lack of verbal development and, uh, and actually they're non-speaking. And to me, that is the most interesting. That's an area where I think we can really make a big difference. Well, that's, I recently had the opportunity to talk to a psychologist who does a lot of work in criminal behavior, and she says that sometimes these undiagnosed autism cases can show up um, because people misread body language or, as you said, the verbal communication isn't there where maybe they, they're not expressing themselves the same way. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think one of the most fascinating things in my research about autism is that, you know, people and a lot of the, the, the general idea is that they have a cognitive deficit, especially the ones that have trouble speaking. And what we've been able to show is it's actually not that. They were actually, almost all of them have genius level left brain skills, even the ones that can't speak, but they have problems with feeling and controlling their body so that they really don't have control over a lot of their own movements or behaviors. And it, it's kind of like they're trapped in this body that doesn't work or does whatever it wants. And so they may do things that really look, you know, violent or aggressive, and they don't mean to be like that at all. They really literally don't have control over a lot of their body. Um, and, you know, so this can really be a problem at times. That's, and you have somewhat of a different approach to these developmental issues. Can you take us inside that? Yeah, I think it all starts with really understanding what is happening in the brain. You know, it's one of the big mysteries, but I've spent my career really studying it. We published about eight papers last year on this. And the idea is that there is this developmental maturational delay or imbalance. Um, there isn't any damage. There isn't any pathology. Uh, most of the time, there is no genetic mutation. There's this developmental imbalance, mainly between the hemispheres of the brain, where the right hemisphere is delayed in its initial development, the left hemisphere comes online too early and suppresses the right. And this is often related to something called retained primitive reflexes that affect their motor development. So what we do is look at improving, getting rid of these reflexes and improving that balance in the brain by specifically stimulating it. Um, and because the, the body also is involved, we, we also look at diet and nutrition and all of those types of things as well but it's really about addressing the core issue and creating this balance and kind of reconnecting the hemispheres to communicate with one another well that's you know we've seen autism rates rise for several years now do we know why that is yeah, it's mostly an environmental factor. My third book was all about this. Um, you know, we see that, uh, first of all, we see that there's so many more males than females. It's about four times. Males have more of a, of a delayed maturation of the brain to begin with. And as I said, our research and others has shown that now there's a delay in the maturity of the brain, especially in the right side of the brain. And again, males are a little bit more susceptible in the womb and outside the womb of different environmental factors. And there's a number of things, but one of the things is things like estrogen disruptors and things that alter testosterone levels in the womb and uh, early in development and even in teenage years. Mm, it's so fascinating. I could talk to you all morning, but unfortunately, we're out of time. Dr. Robert Melillo, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. For more information on his work and his studies on autism, check out our website, kcalnews.com. That's a really interesting conversation. It applies to so many people. Absolutely.